Iran's looming presidential election is promising to be a cliffhanger with a record turnout expected from the country's 42 million eligible voters. Friday's poll has been enlivened by a real challenge from Mir Hussein Mousavi, a reformist candidate who has sparked a real debate over Iran's aggressive foreign policy. The sudden emergence of grassroots support for Mousavi is threatening the otherwise smooth return to power of the hardline but populist incumbent Mahmoud Ahmadinejad. But the real question is whether Iran's religious leadership is ready for a new president seeking to reshape Iran's role in the Middle East. The ABC's Middle East correspondent Ben Knight filed this report from Tehran. On the face of it, this looks just like any other democratic election campaign. There are mass rallies. There are speeches and even feisty television debates. The candidate's supporters are all convinced that only their man can save the country, while the other will lead it to ruin. When this campaign began, most people expected President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad would be returned easily. But something's happened. It appears that an earthquake, a flood, an avalanche is coming. Mir Hussein Mousavi has come from nowhere to emerge as the main challenger to Mahmoud Ahmadinejad. Most 68-year-old men can only dream of causing this much excitement. His core supporters are the millions of young Iranians who clearly want a different future and don't like what Iran has become in the eyes of the world. The vision of Iran has uh, come down to all about Ahmadinejad. It's not all about Ahmadinejad. We, we've got 7,000 years of uh, uh, contrast, uh, 7,000 years history, and he's ruined it in these four years. This election is breaking the mould in Iran. It's unheard of, for example, for a candidate's wife to join the campaign. But it's not a completely Western-style election. Everywhere here, there are parallels that are just not quite right. This has all of the atmosphere of a rock concert, but even so, you have men and women on either side forming their own barriers to keep each other apart. And just who has the most support is impossible to tell on the streets of Tehran. Mir Hussein Mousavi was polling single figures in this campaign until the main reformist candidate, the former president, Mohammad Khatami, pulled out. He said he knew he couldn't win, but that someone had to beat Mahmoud Ahmadinejad. Our national security is at the highest possible level. There is no threat anymore. But as a former foreign minister, Mir Hussein Mousavi is a man who's had much more exposure to the West. He wants to improve foreign relations and end Iran's isolation. In foreign policy, our nation's dignity has been harmed. Our country has been shamed. Development inside the country is in trouble. But President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad is only ramping up the rhetoric. So far, we said we would build 3,000 nuclear centrifuges. But the world must know that from today, our goal is 55,000 centrifuges. Certainly Israel believes a nuclear Iran is its greatest threat. But some believe that threat is overstated. As the Supreme Leader Ayatollah Khamenei is very well aware that getting involved in a, in a, in a war, nuclear war with Israel could be the end, of the end of the regime. And they are very much after their own interests. And it's very unlikely that they would, get in, they, they would attack Israel with a nuclear weapon. Of the four candidates, Mahmoud Ahmadinejad is the only one who wants to continue the Cold War with the US and the West. I would like to speak directly to the people and leaders of the Islamic Republic of Iran. This New Year's message to Iranians from Barack Obama, the leader of the country still known as the Great Satan, surprised many people. In Persian, the three words, U, Ba, Ma, means he is with us. And I think the people of Iran more and more see the President of the United States as somebody who could be with them. Mayur Javadunfar is a Middle East analyst who left Iran eight years after Ayatollah Khomeini took power. He says Barack Obama has blunted President Ahmadinejad's ability to divert attention from the economy. The level of inflation since Ahmadinejad came to power is double what it was in 2005. Unemployment is almost double what it was again. 
and drug use is a, is a major plague that, that's affecting many Iranian families because of the poverty. Poverty is a major issue. Even so, Mahmoud Ahmadinejad is still the leading candidate, at least according to one opinion poll this week. He spends a lot of his time among Iran's poor, handing out money. Many of them regard him as one of their own and a hero. In fact, much of the country's massive oil income, around $60 billion last year, went on subsidies and cash handouts. The reformists say it should be going to development. And after all, this is Iran, where under its strange and unique form of religious democracy, the real power always lies with the supreme and unelected religious leader, Ayatollah Khamenei. He stepped into the campaign early on, telling voters not to support the pro-Western candidates, which was effectively an endorsement of Mahmoud Ahmadinejad. The very fact that he allowed that person to run in the first place goes that the Supreme Leader shows that the Supreme Leader is, is, uh, is in charge of, of who is going to be Iran's next president, either directly or indirectly. The, pres the Supreme Leader is also in charge of Iran's foreign policy. He will decide who will negotiate with America and what will be discussed and what will be compromised, if any. Iran has had a reformist president just four years ago with Mohammad Khatami, but he was hamstrung by the conservative religious leaders who still hold the real power in the country. If Mir Hussein Mousavi wins this election, he'll face exactly the same struggle, but perhaps with more success. I don't think that uh, reformists this time will be as docile as they did four years ago. They will put up much more resistant to pressure from the hardliners. And the election is Friday. Ben Knight reporting from Tehran.